Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Kaler. I'm the Cloverdale City Manager. Uh, welcome to our uh, Lighting Landscape District uh, Community Outreach uh, Meeting and Workshop. Um, uh, we do this uh, uh, workshop uh, every year about this time to uh, take uh, community input on the seven different lighting and landscape districts and to answer questions and talk about uh, the lighting and landscape districts. We're going to, uh, this year, we've um, uh, going to have uh, 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 Mr. Alan uh, uh, Frick from um, uh, uh, who's been doing our videoing of our council meetings is here tonight to do a video of this meeting and um, uh, we are uh, Alan is the same person who is doing the video production of our uh, city council meetings so uh, we're really happy to be able to a a offer this uh, new additional community outreach so that a lot of people we know can't come to the meetings and so our hope would be if the uh, video is a uh, good high a uh, high quality that we'll be posting it up on our YouTube channel the same places uh, the same place that uh, the city council meetings are being posted uh, up to so uh, smile you're gonna be on TV tonight okay um, so just a couple of things if you got a cell phone uh, it's uh, be a good idea to uh, turn it off and maybe put it on um, uh, on the vibrate function so it doesn't go off in the middle of the meeting and and uh, uh, disturb us uh, there's a number of uh, city staff here uh, to be able to answer uh, questions uh, from uh, the community. Um, we have uh, Shannon Peterson, who works in our finance department. Uh, uh, we have Susie Holmes, which is our, our, our finance uh, manager. Uh, we have uh, Tony Lombardi, who uh, uh, is a, a landscape maintenance worker. And then uh, uh, Hector Galvan, who is uh, the landscape uh, supervisor. And uh, we have uh, uh, David uh, Kelly, who um, is uh, going to be uh, the city's new city manager. So um, the order of the, the uh, meeting is we have a, a PowerPoint presentation and some slides to go through. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the slides. Then we're going to go through uh, each one of the districts. Um, Hector will come up and discuss some of the things that have been going in, on in the, that, those districts the past year some of the things that he's thinking about in the upcoming year. And then we'll be asking uh, for people uh, from each one of those districts if they have any questions. Uh, we'll a be answering your questions. We'll be taking your input. Um, down here we have um, uh, uh, Linda Moore, who's the deputy city clerk. Um, she's got a sign-in pad. So if you have any, uh, uh, if you want to sign in and get uh, give your email address, then when the actual lighting and landscape scape district report uh, comes back to the city council, uh, uh, you can be notified, okay? Uh, we have had a couple of meetings with uh, uh, people in the, uh, specific meetings with uh, interested parties in the cottages, and so um, I think there's some faces from, uh, from uh, that group, and, and we've, we've, met, we've met with you, uh, and we actually did a, Hector and I did a uh, walking tour uh, with some, uh, interested an interested citizen uh, and then we had a before that we had a meeting uh, where we met with um, some uh, people I see in the audience tonight where we tried to answer their questions about what was going on in the cottages landscape district so uh, with that I'll get into the slideshow okay so one of the things that uh, we're at first couple slides to show some of the activities and one of the things that always comes seems to come up is that we try our best in the lighting and landscape districts to uh, get as much um, uh, low cost or free labor as we can. And one of the things uh, uh, areas that we do you do use is we use the Cal Fire Conservation Crew crews coming out of Mendocino County. And so this slide just represents some the CDF crew that was working up in the cottages uh, last year, and uh, they do general cleanup and weed abatement, uh, string trimming. Uh, so this uh, shows uh, the CAL FIRE crew working in uh, the area that we call the, the, the old winery, the old winery ruins, which is up near the water tanks on Hot Springs Road within uh, the cottages. Uh, one of the other crews uh, that we work with is the youth ecology crew, and here's a, a, a photograph from last summer. Um, it includes uh, Hector and the city engineer and some of the administrators from the youth ecology program, as well as the, uh, the young adults who worked on the ecology program. And uh, Hector can talk about that in a little bit more detail when he comes up. Uh, but usually we have uh, three to four, sometimes five young people uh, that work through the ecology uh, crew program. And they work on projects 
uh, within uh, the district. And here was an example of some of the projects that they worked on last year um, within, vintage, within Vintage Meadows. Um, you can see we had a, an area that was badly overgrown and they came back and helped us um, uh, 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 trim back the, the shrubs and bushes and, and clean up the area. Uh, some of the projects that we've done uh, in the lighting and landscape districts in the past year. Uh, here's the median landscaping at Healdsburg Avenue. This is in the vi uh, Vintage Meadows uh, landscape area. Some of you might remember there was a large uh, valley oak tree in this median uh, that rotted out in the center, uh, dropped a large branch, uh, became a hazard. So we had the tree removed and uh, the landscape crew uh, went through and re-landscaped uh, that median last November? Another project that uh, 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 the landscape crew has been working on has been at the corner of Hot Springs and South Cloverdale Boulevard. And maybe, Hector, you can come up and uh, grab a microphone and talk a little bit about this project because it's underway right now. Uh, what, we're looking at, what we're looking at right now is uh, the corner of Hot Springs. And uh, that white stuff you see there is uh, gypsum, which uh, helps, down, uh, helps break down the uh, soil particles. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that picture was taken a couple days ago. Uh, the planting is still in progress uh, right now. Here's some before and after pictures of some recent planting, Hector. Right. So that's before and after. We did that corner yesterday. That's the corner of Hot Springs. And uh, if everything uh, goes to, uh, to our, uh, our work plan, we should be done with the whole project early next week. And the, what we're doing here, just so everybody knows, is uh, we're actually uh, replacing uh, plants that have died uh, due to their life expectancy. And uh, so we're just replacing plants that were there at one point. Okay. Thanks, Hector. Thanks, Hector. So we're, we're going to go through some, uh, uh, some other slides of the districts now. And maybe, Hector, you can talk as we go to each one of the districts. Oh, uh, first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about finance because at the last city council meeting, there were a number of questions about HOA versus lighting and landscape districts. And Susie, could you, you come up and talk about this, this slide here? Uh, because you did, you did some research comparing the, some of the HOAs in, in Cloverdale with uh, the lighting and landscape districts. Yeah, so I called both of the HOAs that I was aware of and asked what their monthly and annual assessments were. And then I compared those to three of the seven districts. Um, and I chose ones that were of like size in my mind. Um, being the number of properties in the in the areas, um, so. so we're just bring, we just uh, put this information together uh, because we did have some we did have some questions uh, at the last council meeting about what's the difference between an HOA and a lighting and landscape district. Uh, the governance models are different. Uh, basically, anytime a subdivision is uh, proposed by a developer, there's really in California two different models for paying for amenities within. Uh, within those districts. There's the lighting and landscape district model, which establishes a, a district with se uh, an assessment. And there is then the other model is the homeowners association model, which establishes an association uh, with its own governance that sets um, what the annual uh, and monthly assessment is for the operation of the HOA. Uh, if you want to say something, Tony, um, Go ahead, grab a microphone. Tony, Tony Lombardi is going to, why don't you go around over here, Tony, and so um, Helen can, can make a comment. For you. Oh, okay. Thank you. So I was the president of Rancho until July when I sold my house and bought in the cottages. So I got out my tax bill and I was going to do the monthly comparison just like finance has. What, I probably can't tell you the details, but a big chunk of the Rancho $75 goes to management, and then a big chunk goes to the rainy day fund reserves for fencing. So one of my big questions is, does the lighting and landscape district pay for lighting? Because Rancho doesn't pay for their own electricity for lighting, I'm pretty sure. And does it pay for fencing, right. for the perimeter fencing? OK, so uh, good, good questions. Um, the lighting and landscape districts uh, they do, the, in Cloverdale do not pay for lighting. Lighting is paid for uh, uh, for the uh, sh street lights in the neighborhoods are paid through 
through a, a, a general fee that is paid to PG&E. So the assessments are really based on the, um, uh, the landscaping, uh, the fencing, and uh, the other amenities uh, such as Vintage Meadows, which would be the, the, the park, except for the restrooms, and then the pathways. Okay. So we'll go through each one of the districts and talk about each one of the districts here. Uh, here. But we just wanted to, we did have some questions at the last council meeting, so we just wanted to show, show what a uh, rough comparison was between some of the HOAs. And of course, keep in mind, Dell Webb's assessment does, we understand that that does include a clubhouse and a swimming pool, a tennis court, it's, but it does, uh, Del Webb does have extensive landscaping uh, as a part of that development. Okay, so here is the city map of the seven districts. And so we're just kind of go from, I'm gonna go from north to, to south, uh, and uh, each zone has a number, but I'm not going to uh, focus in on the numbers right now. We'll do those in the next uh, series of slides. But the seven, the, uh, the seven districts, and if you're from one of the districts, when I say its name, if you could raise your hand, then give us an idea of who's here from what districts, um, and, and we'll uh, be, able to, uh, uh, be able to give more of a description uh, of what's going on in each one of the districts. So the first one is Jefferson Springs. Okay. Uh, Second is Vintage Meadows, okay. um, Ioli Ranch, uh, Brookside Terrace, The Cottages. Okay, a lot of people from The Cottages. Okay, good. Uh, the Vineyards and Sunrise Hills. Okay, all right, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to show a specific slide for each one of the areas. And it looks like what we got people here, uh, mostly Hector is from Jefferson, uh, Vintage Meadows, and the Cottages, okay? So Jefferson, why don't you just talk to us a little bit about what's going on in Jefferson and kind of what you're thinking for the next upcoming year, Hector. Uh, Jefferson Springs is uh, it's located at the north end of town. And the trail has got a, a walking trail along the Cloverdale Creek. Um, it's got a really nice DNG uh, walk-in trail with a nice little sitting area uh, with some trees that we uh, actually we installed about five years ago. Uh, the trees are coming to a point now they're mature enough to where we're actually going to start uh, cutting down the water, the watering on the on the trees. Uh, so we're going to save some money there on the watering. Uh, the overall the park uh, looks really nice. Uh, everything is really healthy and uh, what I have uh, planned for next year is to add a couple a uh, couple of picnic tables uh, one at each end of the trail uh, so if somebody wants to go out have a picnic or even take a little break while they're walking when they're walking along the trail they can do so uh, so yeah uh, Jefferson Springs uh, uh, is uh, it's looking really really nice and we'll come back and we'll be able to take any, any questions at each one, uh, for each one of the zones. But I just wanted to kind of give a, a summary of what's going on in each one of the zones. And then we'll come back and we're, we'll hear until everybody's questions are answered. Oh, well, maybe, uh, Tony, maybe you can go take the microphone over and... Uh, and Thank you. Oh, I just wanted to say I really appreciate the work that you do because I walk that every morning at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Really so, and it. it's, it's, it's clean. There's no dog poop everywhere. Thank you. you. Know, and all that stuff. The trees look healthy. It's great. Thank you. Really Thank you so it. much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Cheryl. Okay, so um, kind of heading down uh, again. Now, th these are going to be by zone number, so not quite the same order that I read them off when, on the first slide. So zone two is Vintage Meadows. So Hector, talk a little bit. A lot, a lot has happened in Vintage Meadows the last year. So yeah, Vintage Meadows, uh, at the park uh, runs along Foothill uh, in Elbridge. Uh, last year we had, a, like Paul mentioned earlier in the in the meeting, uh, we had a really uh, a really big oak tree that was uh, uh, actually uh, had been in decline for the last few years, and uh, we we've, we've tried everything possible to to prune the tree and to uh, get it back to health, but uh, after a couple of arborist reports, uh, we came with, uh, to the determination that the tree was uh, actually pretty dangerous, 
and we went ahead uh, and, uh, and took the tree down. Uh, we took the tree down and we uh, regraded the site, the island, and re-landscaped the island with uh, drought-tolerant plants. Uh, and uh, if you guys have, have driven by there, it, it, uh, it looks uh, really nice. We planted some, uh, some olive trees and some lavenders, and they're all drought-tolerant uh, that require just a minimum or no maintenance at all. So it, it turned out really nice. So one of the big features in this area is, is the actual park itself, Hector. Uh, there's been some developments in the, the park this last year too. Yeah, we uh, we planted a few trees uh, around the around the restrooms uh, to try to kind of hide the restrooms a little bit. Uh, what I'm planning on doing for the following uh, year is to uh, plant uh, 15. I think it was, I'm not sure about the number. It's 12 or 15 crepe myrtles along the restrooms and along the creek. Uh, again, uh, to to make that area look uh, look nice. And then we also have I also have it in my uh, uh, books to replace four trees that were uh, compromised by wood boring uh, beetles. Uh, we were able to get the beetles under control before they spread throughout the park. So this, uh, this next fiscal year, we're planning on replacing those trees with a little better tree that is actually more susceptible to, to a beetle. When, when, when uh, Hector talked about uh, the tree, uh, one of the things, uh, an important detail is uh, the actual tree removal uh, and uh, was uh, not paid for by the Lighting and Landscape District. The actual tree removal was paid for uh, through the Streets Department uh, out, of, out of the general fund. The landscaping and the landscaping right. improvements was, was paid, paid for through the, the right. Lighting and Landscape District. Okay, so we'll move, move on here. Um, okay, cottages. Uh, uh, there's been a fair amount of activity in the cottages, so can you fill us in on on what's been going on there? Uh, the cottages, as we all know, is the biggest district uh, uh, we have in our seven L and L districts. Uh, we have a lot of open, uh, a lot of trails, open spaces, uh, creeks, uh, and uh, they need to be maintained. And uh, this last year, we proposed to replace the plants that were again, uh, uh, they pretty much li they live their life expectancy like anything else. Plants have a life expectancy. So we budgeted to replace the plants from Pepperwood to Hot Springs. And we're actually in the process of doing that right now. Uh, we have uh, about half of the plants uh, installed already. And we're hoping that by the end of next week, or in the middle of the week, we should have the whole project uh, finished. And, uh, and for next year, we're planning on doing, what I'm trying to do is take it in uh, one block at a time. And next year, I'm proposing to replant, re actually replace, from Douglas Fir to uh, Grape Gables. And uh, so that's what I'm proposing for next year. So Hector, I'm gonna jump, jump into uh, something that might come up as a question because it did come up uh, when, during one of our community meetings. Can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the irrigation? Because there was some concern at the community meetings related, yes. to, to, related to the irrigation. Right, yeah, there was a, some concern at, at our meetings about uh, possible leaks on the irrigation. Uh, Tony Lombardi and myself, uh, went through the whole uh, irrigation system. Uh, we troubleshooted the whole irrigation system and we found no leaks. Uh, so I just wanted to let everybody know that we are monitoring uh, the irrigation, not only in the cottages, but in every district. Uh, and uh, and if um, the more eyes, the better. If you guys ever see a leak out there when, you know, we don't always c catch it right away. If you guys see a leak uh, or anything, you guys, you know, you guys can give us a call and uh, we'll go out there and fix it as soon as so, possible. So Hector, why don't you ever remind everybody what your, what your phone number is at your desk? Uh, my office number is 894-1707. Uh, okay, thanks Hector. And we check the phone throughout the day. Okay, and we'll come back and answer all, any questions related to uh, the cottages or any of the other uh, districts here in, a, in just a minute. So we already, uh, we're already going to jump down to the vineyards. Nobody raised their hand uh, related to the vineyards. But we're, we're here, so why don't we, we talk about it? Because somebody might wa be watching on TV later on and, and be interested in what's going on in the vineyards. Yeah, the vineyards, uh, the vineyards actually looks really healthy. Uh, we, uh, we did some, uh, this last fall, we pruned our, uh, our sycamore trees. We brought them up, uh, uh, brought the canopy up. And the whole uh, district looks really healthy. Uh, we just we went through the whole irrigation system again. And we were just out there uh, last week uh, doing some weed abatement. But overall, the district looks really nice, nice and healthy. 
Okay, Ioli Ranch. These are, we've got two of these small districts right, right, uh, kind of um, uh, right next to each other. One off of uh, right off the boulevard, and another one off of uh, Brookside. But why don't we start it out with Ioli first? Uh, Ioli Ranch is a small little district. Uh, there's a few shrubs and some ground covers, and a couple uh, uh, daylilies. Uh, the the park uh, overall looks really nice. Uh, we've had some uh, possible vandalism of, of water. Uh, 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 I guess uh, theft, and uh, but other than that, uh, everything is looking good. Uh, there's no changes uh, that we're planning on doing this next year. Just uh, uh, keeping up with the maintenance. And then the other small uh, lighting and landscape district in that same neighborhood is uh, Brookside Terrace. Yeah, Brookside Terrace. Uh, we uh, we just finished uh, with the. Uh, we just actually finished performing our uh, spring uh, uh, pruning. Uh, we had a. Some really nice uh, compliments uh, by the neighborhood uh, residents there. And uh, the park uh, looks really nice. And uh, uh, we're just, the only thing we have planned is to go through the whole irrigation system one more time before the heat comes in. Uh, but overall, it's, it's, uh, it's really looking We did good. have a little setback in uh, Brookside Terrace. That was about uh, 24 months ago when the irrigation uh, computer uh, gave out, right? Right. Yeah, the, uh, the irrigation controller like anything else that uh, it, uh, it, it burned out. So we, had to re so we had to spend a little bit of money to replace the irrigation controller and we actually replaced it with a better, uh, smarter, uh, smarter irrigation controller. Okay. And it's working great ever since. Thank you. And then uh, Sunrise Hills. Sunrise Hills uh, is, uh, is uh, the area where we have a designated wetlands area. There is that. Uh, along the trail and we're uh, actually only allowed to, to weed eat and to mow uh, a six for four to six foot section all the way around the trail and around the fences. Uh, the overall the, the landscape looks, uh, looks good. Uh, I'm planning uh, uh, this next coming uh, fiscal year to uh, reseal and uh, get rid of a couple of tripping hazards uh, on the trail itself. There's been some roots that had uh, uplifted the asphalt. So we're uh, hoping that uh, uh, this year we can go in there and reseal uh, and re slurry the trail because uh, we do have a lot of walkers, a lot of people that like to walk that trail. Okay. And it, what, last year, um, I know we got a call out of there late, kind of late in the season after the fires, um, concerns about the, uh, the weed conditions. Right, there was, a, there was a, a resident that was concerned about the, uh, the weed uh, abatement, the conditions about, especially with the fires. Uh, and so uh, as soon as we got the, uh, the email, uh, Tony Lombardi and myself went out and, uh, and uh, took care of the weed abatement uh, uh, concerns that the resident uh, had. Uh, sometimes it's kind of challenging in that section because it's so wet there all the time. Uh, so you kind of have to wait for the right time to go in there and perform the mowing. Because uh, even along the fence, uh, the water table is pretty high there. Okay, super. All right. So um, thank thank you, Hector. We're gonna we're gonna uh, kind of pop back up here. So you know, don't don't go too far because uh, you really know the specifics of these areas. And so we're gonna we're gonna go back now um, to Jefferson Springs and um, see if there's any questions uh, about Jefferson Springs. Is there any feedback? I mean. What's helpful to, uh, uh, to your city, city uh, employees right now is if there are any issues or concerns, uh, we are planning for the upcoming uh, budget. And that's why we plan this meeting about this time. So if there are things that you want us to think about and address, um, it's helpful for us to hear about them now so that we can then be uh, thinking about do we need to um, uh, make some additional allocations for, to address uh, speci specifics in each one of the districts. So um, we're going to go for Jefferson Springs. Any questions or concerns about Jefferson Springs? Come, come. So since we're videotaping, um, it's really important that Tony come up with the microphone so that, um, uh, it, that uh, people at home when they watch this video can, uh, can hear you. It's not a, it, whoa. It's not a big deal, but um, along the creek, there's a couple um, white perforated pipe that stick way out um, that 
they just kind of look ugly, and I was wondering if they could just be cut off at the slope so it doesn't, they just hang out and look kind of funky. You know well, you know? uh, I, I know which bugs you're talking yeah. about. You know what we can do? We can go out there uh, tomorrow morning, first thing, and, oh. and see if the, uh, we can come up with a solution to, yeah. to fix that. I was going to send my husband out there with a cutoff saw, but I thought I should probably usually ask I run, <laughs> Usually I run those pipes, you, you place uh, boulders, yeah. rocks to kind of hide it because it is meant for uh, it's a storm that's a drain. Yeah. So maybe what we could do is add some, uh, some, some boulders so we can hide the pipe and you know, we'll have okay. to see it. Other than that, you guys. You know how much I appreciate all the Thank hard you. work around town. You always appreciate make it look it. beautiful. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to move down here. We're going to go to um, zone two, which is vintage meadows. Hello there. Thank you. So uh, first and foremost, really want to compliment the collaboration that came together to get the um, repurposed rubber from the tires into the park. One of the questions I had is um, understanding that came from grant money. Is there room in the budget to ensure maintenance? Um, sometimes, obviously, the rubber is going to get kicked out of the out of the park and taken with people, and sometimes garbage and you know children leaving candy and things that are fun. You know, part of being a kid happens there, and I just wanted to make sure that. Understanding the money came from a grant, do we have a sustainability plan uh, for something as wonderful as being able to add that safety precaution? And again, just to kind of jump on everybody's bandwagon, y'all are killing it, man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, the, um, uh, the rubber mulch uh, was bought from, um, uh, through a grant through, um, uh, uh, called Cal, uh, Cal Recycle. And the idea is, is that uh, the, the grant pay for the initial purchase of uh, the rubber mulch in the parks, and then subsequently we would uh, use that same vendor again if it needed to be replaced. Um, my observation of the rubber mulch is it holds up a lot better than the wood chips. It so Hector, you got you. I know that uh, you've been watching that too. Yeah, it holds up a lot better. And uh, just so you know, just so everybody knows, we do have a, a few extra bags uh, back at the yard for for, for reasons like you mentioned. Uh, we have a few bags back there, so every couple of years we do go back in there and uh, place more rubber mulch, like you were saying, under the swings where the kids kick it, and uh, under the slides. Uh, but yeah, that stuff is pretty, pretty amazing stuff. It's bouncy stuff. That's it's awesome. very, it's very cushy. Um, and one of the things that we noticed with the wood chips um, is that um, it just wasn't as soft. If uh, the children th uh, fall off the playground equipment, um, you know, after. Uh, 12 months or so, the wood chips, it gets to just to be regular old hard ground, uh, where the rubber mulch really, really seems to keep its, uh, its cushion uh, over time. So, okay. Th yeah. Let's get that out there. So, a lot of moms in town likes, like to meet up at this park because either they live there or it's one of the best little kid play equipment zones. They would use it more often if there was more shade in the playground area. The trees are good, but I don't know if you're doing budgets, if you could put in some of those poles and the triangle shades. Um, and then my other question is, so that wild area over there, with, it's got, you've got like a rope or a chain across it, and it gets flowers. Are we allowed to explore in that zone, or do you want people out of there? No, you're actually, you're actually allowed to explore. It's considered a wetlands area. But uh, that one is not as, uh, they're not as strict as Sunrise Hill. Sunrise Hills, you absolutely can't go in there. But there, I, you know, I see kids going down to the creek and stuff. So, okay, so are you, are you like, if kids want to go in there and um, chase pollywogs and things like that? Or, yeah. yeah. Okay. Pick blackberries in the summer. I know a lot of kids do that there. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments on uh, uh, Vintage Meadows? Okay, we're going to move down here. All right, the cottages. So, um, any questions or comments on the cottages? Okay. I, I just have a, I have a question here. I have my tax bill, and uh, the cottages Cloverdale says direct charge, and I think you had it up there. To, that's the assessment for thirteen twenty four, correct? 
That, right. Go, that goes right to the city. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Are we looking in the future of having that increased or? Right. Okay. So I'm going to probably ask Susie to come up and, and help talk about that. But uh, what is going to be happening is every year we do a engin new engineer's report. Mm -hmm. um, and the engineer goes and looks at the past average for the last three years in the zones and tries to maintain a 25% re reserve. And the assessment can increase by no greater than the consumer price index. So, Susie, maybe you can come up and um, uh, take the microphone from uh, Hector there and, and talk a little bit about how the lighting and landscape, the finance of the lighting and landscape districts works. Sure. So, um, we would normally have um, the budgets of what, no, let me so normally we would we would start with our um, budget process, go through, decide what things are going to be added to the different districts. Like we talked about picnic areas and and things like that, we would add that into into the budget. Then we would come up with the assessment value based on um, the number of properties in that district divided by the budget. And then we would include a 25% reserve if it's not to, if it doesn't create an inordinate increase. There is a maximum that we can increase, and it is the cost of living annually, and we have not gotten to that number with the cottages at this point. So last year, there were some increases last year in some of the districts. Which districts were, did, saw an increase last year, Susie? Ioli Ranch saw a $4 a year increase last year, and that's the only increase we had last year. Yeah, I, th I understand that last year, but I think um, previously the cottages had a pretty good increase. And I'm just trying to plan for the future here. Um, but but getting, what did you say, the number of properties divided by, what was it again? The budget amount, which, which includes all of the costs associated with, with the district. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, my question really was what the gentleman just um, already alluded to. But I'd like to expand on it just a little bit. And that is, um, uh, I think I understand the criteria if you need to increase the monthly assessment. Um, from a management point of view, and you take a look at the budget, uh, and uh, you come to a conclusion, first of all, the 25%, um, the 25% on the... Uh, the, uh, the cushion that you build into your budget. Why 25%? Well, that, that's a percentage that has been, uh, uh, was originally authorized by the, the city council. It's also the, the reserve that we use within the, uh, within the general fund. David, do you, you want to come up and, and talk about how we, uh, uh, we, we structure reserves? Why don't you come up here? Thank you, Paul. Um, I, I, I think, you know, to talk a little bit about the reserves, because the, the, there's some concern that sometimes when you establish a reserve that that automatically means it gets spent. Um, usually reserves are established for the purposes of any uh, potential emergencies that may come up or un, unplanned for expenses. I mean, one of the reasons why we're conducting the workshop today is really to get your input and the community's input on whether you'd like to see improvements, like we've heard from Miss um, Broughton, that you know maybe we could consider some, uh, some, some additional shading. Uh, but uh, Hector, you, you've experienced cases where we haven't had uh, uh, a certain improvement identified within a, in a, in a, in a zone uh, that we had to tap reserves because right. there was uh, an emergency project. Maybe you can just kind of touch on that, why, why we uh, establish or maybe the type of project that you encountered where we had to utilize reserves. Well, yeah, like you mentioned, uh, Dave, uh, I mean, it, it, can, it can even be an emergency, like a tree. Uh, like a lot of these districts uh, have uh, mature trees. If a tree comes down, we have to 
you know, or if a tree needs to be removed, uh, we need to hire a company to come in and, uh, and remove the tree, the hazard, and that comes from the reserves. Uh, any main, main water breaks, uh, places, situations where we had to replace backflows, or any, any big expense like that, that's where the reserves come in. Well, th yeah, thank you for Hector. And, and I guess what, what I think is important to understand with respect to the reserves is because of the way uh, public accounting works, whenever there is at the end of the year a fund balance that's left, that fund balance gets rolled over to the next fiscal year. And so that then gets factored in to the next year's assessment. So if in a particular year, you know, there, there, there are no emergencies, there's no need to use that reserve fund for any projects, that, that money stays within that l and L budget, and it's legally required to be, stay within it. So, um, and, and re, it really it's, it's, it's through the engineering report that is, uh, you know, the, identify those improvements, and, and then that becomes a figure that we use to establish the, the reserves. I hope, I hope that addressed your question. Well, it does, and I understand your explanation of it. Just from my point of view, that the hard and fast rule of 25% and you carry that over from year to year to year, use it or not, need it or not, doesn't make, from a business point of view, a lot of sense. You need to be flexible on that at times. Okay. The other point I would like to make is that if you do a budget, uh, you know, and you look forward to what you think your needs are going to be. Um, one of the things that um, uh, I think should be done, and again, from a business point of view, is that where can we cut costs? Does it ever uh, get into the conversation, where can we cut costs instead of looking at the budget and say, well, you know, I think we need to increase these uh, assessments for these people at the cottage by 5 or $10 a month. Where can we cut costs? Then this is the reason for the meeting we had before, where I explained uh, that uh, maybe we ought to uh, take a look at that. And um, Hector is doing a great job. I look at what's been done this far, and it looks very nice. You know, but what we have is a lot of plants, and all the plants need water. And we can count in California at some point, maybe not this year, next year, but it'll be a drought. And some of the water is going to be, have to be impacted. And these, and these plants are going to suffer. Okay. So my point was, let's look forward and maybe prepare for a drought. Plant, doesn't plant, don't plant as much. Cap some of the water, which is a cost saving. Plant, material, maintenance, and water. Okay. And I'm not saying that you should um, do this right now, but it should be part of the thinking of how are we going to go forward with this and uh, maybe plan for a drought. Because I can guarantee you, a drought is going to come. And if you have to cut the water supply to these plants, it's going to look like the devil again. Right? So if you have less plants, and you can cut the water, and have some bark there, or whatever the ground cover is going to be, I think that uh, we need to start thinking along those lines. Yeah, I appreciate the comment. Um, and and I, think, I think our staff does look very carefully at the plant material. Uh, there are uh, specific guidelines that we follow uh, for our particular uh, zone in terms of the amount of, uh, of typical irrigation that we receive. So there's always kind of a, yep. uh, a, 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 be, a best management practice that we try to implement in terms of the plant material that's selected. But we're also trying to uh, take into account the aesthetics of how that's gonna look and how the community, I think, uh, you know, deserves it to look and we, we want it to look nice and um, you know over time there is the necessity with, with, with all plant material uh, to, to replace it. Uh, naturally plants and trees do have a life so over time there is uh, a desire to, to uh, replace some of that existing landscape material and I think uh, you know one of the things I'm, I'm very proud of, of Hector is you know he's, he's got a lot of certifications that he brings to the job that really help him and help us and decide the, the types of plant material uh, that, that's um, you know, planted in a particular landscaped area. But it, with that said, it, it, we always encourage you is when we take a look at the engineering report when it comes available, uh, if there are areas where we can identify where there might be some cost savings uh, that we maybe didn't think about because we, we, we do, I think, try to be very prudent and budgeting for improvements. Uh, I know 
as we, we, we meet with Hector and he says, I'd like to do all these things, we're often just going to say, right. well, we, we need to, to kind of measure some of the expectations. Right. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, we encourage you when, when the engineer's report comes out to really, we can sit down and we can look at it and, and if there's any ways we can identify where, where there might be some cost savings, we'll, we, we can certainly uh, build that in. So. Thank you. Thank, thanks, David. So, um, uh, any any questions uh, more about in the cottages? We got we got another uh, question yeah, up here. Just a quick question, Hector. Wh where do you get your plants from? Uh, where does the city purchase, or where do they get the plants from? We got the, the plants to replant the, the the section we're doing right now from Cloverdale Nursery here in town. So we try we do we do as much as try to buy uh, a local quality products as much as we can. All right, so this is where I live. I moved across the street, actually across two streets, uh, up the hill, and I have some questions and I have some comments. I've gotten a little wider. Are we gonna prune the sidewalks on Foothill at all? I know pruning in the winter makes things bigger and pruning in the summer makes things smaller, so maybe you're waiting for the right time? Yeah, we're just, uh, actually we're just in the process uh, right now of uh, we started it already, and usually what you do, so everybody knows too, around the springtime, we go through every single district and prune stuff away from the sidewalk. And the trees we prune in the fall. But most of the shrubs and the rest of the landscape we do go through there uh, starting next week, the end of next week. OK. So. And I don't mind paying more. I'm coming from the HOA, so I used to pay more. Because I understand that having nice looking plants makes my property value stay up. And I appreciate the work you're doing. I really like your project on Hot Springs Road. Thank you. Can't wait till you get to my block. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I mean, I will wait. The fencing, is the exterior fencing along the community area the city's responsibility? Half of the city's responsibility? Because I know in Rancho, it's full homeowners association responsibility because they want it to look uniform. And I've seen some fencing that's been changed Right, there's some lattice and some not lattice and different styles. Can anybody who's on the edge put whatever fence they want? So you're talking about the ba the backyard fences that uh, adjoin the uh, lighting and landscape districts yep. along along uh, Foothill, primarily Foothill Boulevard. Mm -hmm. So that would be really the perimeter fences along the what is that? That would be the west side of Foothill Boulevard primarily? It's, well, it's the east side of, oh yeah, it's the west side of Foothill. Yes. Right, and then that's there true. would be some yes. on the east side of Foothill Boulevard, uh, north of Grape Gables. Uh, that's a good question, Hector. Have we ever been asked that question before? No, it's the first time ever, anybody's ever asked that question. And sure. from my understanding, is the homeowners but I don't 100% sure. You know what, you will, uh, 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 Helen, right? Uh, we'll, yes. yeah, that's a great question. We'll look into um, it. Uh, you know, if we can, we, we, make, we make a note of that um, and we'll look, into, we'll look into that. But we, that, we've done a lot of these workshops and that's the first time that that question has been, been asked. So we will, we'll, get, we'll get to the bottom of it. And so we had another hand up back in the, in the back row. Hi, uh, my name is Robert Bauer. I live in the cottages. Now, my understanding, my neighbor, uh, Stan Heinz, uh, replaced his fence along Foothill Boulevard just last summer. And my understanding is that he checked with the city, and it is, it is the homeowner's responsibility. But that's just hearsay that I got from right. him. Um, are, are you through? Or do you? No, go ahead. Do more. I thought as long as he was here, I... I... Was ask about park, that okay, well, hold on, hold on a second. Let's have the... Yeah, let, let, for, we get the question about Ferber Park a lot, so why don't you ask it? Oh. Is Ferber Park part of the Landscape and Lighting District? No, Ferber Park is not part of the Lighting and Landscape District. Ferber Park is, um, uh, uh, is excluded from the Lighting and Landscape District, uh, and, and, um, uh, and so the um, sidewalks uh, uh, along Foothill Boulevard uh, and the planting along uh, Foothill Boulevard in front of the parking lot at Ferber Park um, as well as everything else in around the park is not included in, in within the zone. So it is accounted for and budgeted for separately. 
Hi, uh, thanks. I have, a, I have a bunch of disparate remarks to make as I made notes as the conversation was going on. First of all, thank you guys for the wonderful job you're doing. As you know, Ginny and I walk our thank dog you. every day. We talk to you every day. Thank we you. see you out there working every day. And, Appreciate it. And thank, thank you. you very much, both of you and, and your whole crew. Um, I'm a little bit confused about the conversation about the 25%. Now, and, and I'm sorry to bring that up again, but is it, is it okay, so last year you take 25%, you hold it in reserve. This year you take another 25% and add it to that. No. no. Okay, good. All right. No, no, what we're trying to do is maintain. Just maintain 25% at all times. We, we try to budget looking at the last three years averages within the lighting and landscape district right. and looking at special projects. We try to budget so at the end of the year there is a 25% reserve. And right. some okay. of the districts have more than 25%. Some of the districts have, uh, have less. Um, but that is our, that is our target. Okay, thank you. I, I, was, I was really confused about that, and I, I was hoping that was the case. Um, in regards to um, Sunrise Village, is it? I know we're not talking about right, that right now, but I have this note here. Did you know that there was a car in the middle of, of that swamp? Pardon me? I did not know there was a car in there. There's an abandoned car in the middle of that vernal swamp. <laughs> Really? Yes, there is. And sometimes when the foliage gets down low enough, you can see it. Yeah, like we mentioned earlier in the meeting, we're, we're not allowed to go in there, but yeah. you know, I'm going to have to look for that. Yeah, you'll, <laughs> and, it's, <laughs> and it's right smack in the middle. There's no easy way to get to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then the other thing I wanted to say, in agreement with Helen, I'm not in favor of lowering the fees. Um, I think you guys are doing a wonderful job with the fees that we're paying for, that we're paying right now. My goodness, $34 a month. I got two receipts in here. I went to the railroad station today, had two beers and a fish and chips dinner, and I spent $32. <laughs> $34 a month is a deal. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're, since we're on cottages, we have a question right here. Um, I'm glad you brought up the Ferber Park and uh, the fact that it's not part of our landscaping district. Um, we live on Grave Gables Way in the cul-de-sac, and that was a new area that was built out at the end. It was the last uh, section. And when we first moved in there, there was a lot of landscaping directly, which would be like way at the end of Ferber Park. And it was kept up very nicely, and it was, it was beautiful. And now it's mostly dead, and there's hardly anything there. And it seemed like for a while recently there was some uh, uncertainty as to who was responsible for that landscaping. But it sounds like it's part of the park, it, it from is, what you're saying. It is part of the park. And uh, Hec Hec about two weeks ago, yeah. uh, uh, we, uh, Hector and I had a conference on, the, uh, on that area. Yes, yes and uh, we, looked at, we looked at the park's budget, and there is a small, uh, there is a, uh, room, there's a little bit of money in there left uh, on this fiscal year to do some plant replacement. Uh, we've actually already purchased a few plants for that section, a few grasses. So we're planning, as soon as we're done with the cottages, we're planning on heading uh, in that direction and uh, uh, put in, replacing the plants that were there once. Okay. The Cienotha is in the corner there along right, the, where right. the rocks were. It, it doesn't take a lot to, to, you know, to make it look pleasant, but it needs yeah. something. Yeah, so thank I'm you. glad to hear that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, hi. Um, if I could, I have several comments I'd like to make about the engineering reports. And if you look at the employee costs last year to this year's budget, the employee costs decreased. If you look at the breakdown of employee cost, we pay 5% of the city manager's um, salary, 5% for, I guess it's the um, finance department, 5% for the city engineer, six and three quarters for the utility workers, one and two. Now for Hector and his uh, assistant, their percent decreased this year compared to last year. 
Uh, last year, his percent was 39.1%. This year, it's 34.67. And the assistant went uh, slightly decreased from 26.8 to 25.7. Uh, this is the wrong direction. We need more uh, m more hours out there than we're getting. Now you can <clears throat> you can equate these percentages to hours based on a 40-hour work week, 52 hours, 52 weeks a year, <clears throat> and so you come up with uh, with a, a set number of hours based on these percentages. Now, of all the employees I just mentioned. The city only tracks the hours for the uh, for Hector and his assistant, um, and so if you look in the last three years, um, you look at the hours basically we're paying for and the hours that they're actually working, we're like a, a hundred and some hours short, so we're paying for these hundred hours, and we're not getting the hours. And you can't do that. If you, if, if you read the Landscape Act, all our assessment money can only be used for the district. You can't go and use these, the, this money for, you know, uh, uh, for the city. It can only be used for, um, for the district. Um, now, I'd like to continue on. And if you look at um, the, the cost to generate the uh, engineering report, uh, last year the budget, the budget was $11,600. And according to the city, we paid over $18,000. This year, um, the um, the budget went from 11.6 to 14. I don't know how much we paid so far. And for the next year's budget, we're now encumbered to pay 19,002. That's a $5,200 increase with no no explanations. So right there, I started in projecting that our assessment is going to increase next year. Just, just for that, because this 19.2 won't be 19.2. It'll probably be well over 20 to get this engineering report. Uh, also, now this, all these comments I made are for the whole district. This next comment I'm going to make is just for the cottages, and it's for the um, contract services. These are the fire crew. Um, we were paying 1,800 a year, 1,800 a year, 1,200. Then it jumped up to 67, 69, 50, and 8,700. And when you look at the actual cost, it's been less than $3,000. So if we're talking about cost savings, here's a great one right here. Um, and as far as the reserves go, I know we've been talking about the reserves, but if you if you look at the time sequence, the um, the fiscal year for the district starts July and ends, ends at the end of June. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to start the next year, July 1, but the city doesn't get any money until we pay our taxes, which is going to come in December. So the reserve that you're all talking about gets spent to fund the district until that tax money comes in. And what I've been told, when we run out of reserves, the city pays the district costs from the general fund, and then it gets reimbursed when the tax money comes in. So, you know, you're talking about that reserve as if it's something that's static, and it isn't. It gets spent, and then it gets reimbursed later. Um, that's my comment. Okay. So, uh, there were, I, I'm not sure I, there was a question there, but... Susie, you're up. You got your mic the microphone, so maybe you have a few things you want you want to say. Well, I have a couple of things I want to say. Um, first, I want to just um, let you know that the 25 percent, depending on the district, can be anywhere from four thousand to seventeen thousand dollars. That's how much is in the reserve, and that's how much is kept, we try to keep in the reserve. It's so when you say 25 percent, it sounds like a a lot, 
that we're holding in our reserves, but it really isn't, it isn't a huge amount. Um, some of the budgets are 88,000 and we try to keep 25% of that. Some are 16,000 and we try to keep that at 4,000. Um, so I, I just wanted to make that comment about the 25% reserve. And then also um, the wages. So you were talking about the hours being associated with the districts. And while I understand where you're coming from, the hours are actually pro, they're averaged over the past three years so that there's not an anomaly in one year that's going to spike your district um, assessment. So I, I just wanted to point that out as well. Um, I, I think I missed yeah. some of the other questions, but I wanted to point those two things yeah. out. Okay, I, I understand, but <clears throat> what you need to do, what the city needs to do is to read the Lighting and Landscape Act. And in it, it says that the assessments can only be used for the district. So you can't be charging us for hours that are not worked for the district. Yeah. I, I, I think hey, David, you, why don't you stand up here on the oh, podium sure. and then, uh, sure. that way that way you're in the on the video okay. uh, from the camera up there I, I, I think this is for the benefit of the audience um, what mr. mr. Uh, Bacciolini is referring to is uh, the staff costs that are allocated to the various zones and um, as I think mr. Bacciolini pointed out they're based on percentages of overall employees time one of which, for example, was 5% uh, of the city manager's time. So you take 5% of uh, 2,080 hours, uh, whatever that total number of hours is, and you, you allocate that across all of the, the seven zones. As someone who sits next to our city manager uh, and fairly closely, I can assure you that he spends considerable amount of time uh, responding to issues within the, uh, the, the seven LNLs, uh, including um, time meeting with Hector to discuss uh, and Tony to discuss uh, specific issues that they uh, encounter on a daily basis. Obviously, uh, city manager is responsible for providing uh, policy direction to our to our to our employees. Uh, there's discussion about budgets. There's a whole lot of administrative functions that go into uh, that make up and constitute that that 104 hours. Uh, and that and that same is true with the other staff. Uh, I can assure you that uh, our our finance manager uh, uh, spends a lot of time, uh, obviously, in preparation of the budget, reviewing the engineering report, you know, confirming its accuracy, discussing with the city engineer uh, or with the the engineering firm that's preparing the report. And, and so that 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 time that's spent on that. Uh, is allocated directly to the LNLs based on those allocation factors that uh, Mr. Bracciolini reported. So I think it's good information. Uh, you know, it, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I, I, we, we note your comment. We obviously look at it carefully. If there's a, a need somewhere, if we think, well, we'll really, uh, a there's a little bit less time than 5% allocated across those LNLs, we would we would make that adjustment. I think is actually probably more more than fair in terms of his time uh, or her time. Uh, in case next year it'll be probably my time uh, uh, in terms of work, the time spent working within within and for those those districts and responding to to uh, residents issues, you know, and working with staff. So that that's just for the the benefit of the workshop attendees. Just kind of wanted to outline that, but happy to go into more detail. Um, I think the other comment was about the cost of the engineering report itself. Uh, you know, we, we have historically worked with Coastal and Civil Engineering, who has functioned as a city engineer for a number of years in preparation of this report, and we, they bring their history and knowledge to that effort um, in, in, in preparation of that, uh, that report. Uh, as, as most engineering firms uh, and other firms in Sonoma County they generally have cost escalation factors that they include in their budgets on an annual basis. Uh, we don't enjoy it either. Uh, we try our best to negotiate and keep those costs down uh, as much as we can. Uh, but as all businesses experience, 
we think in Sonoma County, they have rising costs, they have employee costs, and those costs generally get reflected in, the, in their hourly rates that go into uh, their scopes of work that they're preparing on our behalf. Um, and um, just to be frank, they, they have experienced uh, having to respond to a lot more issues and comments in the past. And uh, uh, it, it, ta it takes in time. We, they bill us directly for that. Um, and that gets factored into to scopes of work. But we, we really do our best to try to um, you know, manage that, that scope of work as closely as we can and keep those costs, costs down. And that's not just true for l and It's really across all, you know, all of our budgets. Um, so anyways. Can I make a further comment? Uh, as far as the engineering report goes, any engineer that's licensed by California can do these reports. And these reports aren't rocket science. You don't need, you know, you keep talking about uh, a history with it, and, and that's great. But they've been doing this thing for, for 17 years now. And, uh, you know, it's starting to get up to a ridiculous amount of $19,000. You know, anyone here in town that's an engineer can do this thing. They're local, you know, they won't charge us for uh, the, all the commuting costs and all that other stuff. And if we want to, if we want to try and save some money, let's do it local. And you know, you, you look at this thing. It's not all that complicated. It's, a, it's just a really simple, um, a simple report. There's no really, there's no engineering calculations. It's just kind of simple math. And if you really look at this report, it's around 34 pages. Half of it are copies. You can go to last year's, year before, the year before, the year before. And half all those copies are found in, in, in all those reports. So, you know, it's, it's a, what they do is a very small amount of this 34-page document. And charging over $19,000 is just way too much money. And no, no one, you know, I, I brought this up and, 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 and there was not, when the city council passed this, there was not one comment about why is this thing costing us so much money, a $5,200 $5, increase from last year. No comment. There was, in, in their letter to us, they didn't mention anything about well, why well, the keep, cost. Keep, keep, it, keep in mind, that is an estimate. We are, we all, we, it's not, we are, we are billed on, on the, the hours that they work on the project. Uh, and as I think uh, uh, David Kelly lined out, uh, there are increased costs, employee costs. Um, and uh, we, we're all experiencing uh, uh, increase in uh, cost of living, uh, providing uh, uh, the, um, the services. And uh, I know that the council heard your comments. Uh, I, I was there, um, and uh, we, we respect, uh, we respect uh, public comment. Uh, and I want to make a note, uh, there's no, Coastland's not represented here tonight. Uh, we, we are trying to limit our, our, uh, our costs by not having the, the engineer uh, be here for tonight's meeting. So, um, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd just like to uh, tie in with what uh, Mr. Bricolini was saying. Um, in our meeting, we sort of mentioned that. And uh, I think it's a good idea. It should be a matter of policy that these contracts with outside contractors should be looked at and go out to bid maybe every two or three years. I see the value of working with someone that knows the district and knows what that report is all about and has an inside knowledge of it. But uh, it keeps people honest. And you'd be amazed when this uh, engineering company finds out that within a three year span or in the next couple of years or so, uh, this contract will be reviewed and put out the bid with some other people bidding on it. It might, it might just be that you come back to the same people. But as long as they know, you'll be amazed all of a sudden that they're going to pay attention and that there might not be an increase this, uh, for, for the year. It's a sound business thing to do. Thank you. We have a question up here. Uh, yeah, first of all, I want to just tell Victor, thank you very much, because I think he does one heck of a fantastic job in the cottages and all the areas, the vast area that he has to take care of. Him and his crew do a, uh, it's just beyond, the, with the three guys that they have, uh, you guys do an amazing job. And also, like Robert was saying a, a few minutes ago, $43 a month, I think, or $34 a month, excuse me, that we pay in the cottages is really nothing. You look at Del Webb, it's a beautiful area, and it's a smaller area, 
those people are paying almost $2,000 a year to make that beauty as it is. I am one would love to increase the cost of our landscape and lighting situation to where we could hire another man or woman, person, put it that way, to make the place look even prettier than what it does because I enjoy living in a very nice community and I also know that money is what it takes. Thank okay. you. Well, uh, to add on to that comment, what one thing that we have done differently in the past year is we have brought in a seasonal worker. So some of you might have seen Cody, uh, who's on the crew now. Cody works a set number of hours uh, per year. Uh, maybe you guys can remind me, is it, not, is it 900? Is he 700. He's lived, he, as a temporary employee, he's limited to 700 hours a year. So the way we try to manage um, uh, the seasonal worker's time is we're going to try to do about 375 hours before July 1st, or I said, I guess, June 30th, and 375 hours after July 1st. So to have that seasonal worker in there during that, uh, mo that busiest time of year when we see the most plant growth, when uh, things have uh, the most amount of work has to be done. And I think it's made a tremendous difference uh, on the crew. Uh, because they're able to execute some of these uh, uh, better landscape projects. So we have heard uh, and we understand the need to get more uh, labor out on the project, but we don't want to um, uh, do it in a way that all of a sudden you, you see some tremendous cost increases related to labor. And, and so that's why we brought Cody in. We hope Cody sticks around because that's what happens when you have uh, temporary uh, extra help is um, when, they're, when they're good workers, um, uh, other employers uh, see that, and um, and those employees uh, uh, tend to move uh, tend to move on. Uh, but we've been had really good luck so far uh, with uh, with um, with with Cody Moore, uh, and we hope he stick, we hope he sticks around. Uh, I don't want to thank Hector and Tony for their work because you know, it's going to go to their head. Uh, <laughs> actually, I, I tell them almost daily when I see them, as I, I also walk every day. Uh, my comment is I, my house backs up to the winery trail and on, on the back side, and on the side is to the wildlife, wildlife corridor. So I really appreciate the Cal Fire con crew coming through and cleaning that area out. And I think they do a great job when they come in. Uh, they not only cut the weeds, they rake it. It's, they really do a good job out there and it makes me feel safe from fire in that area. I, I really appreciate that. Good, good, thank you, thank you. We, we appreciate their, their, their labor too. Um, and uh, they, one of the challenges that we had last fall with uh, the conservation crew is we couldn't get them. Uh, we're, uh, I know they're scheduled in the next few weeks here to, to come through uh, and start working in town, uh, but what happened with uh, the fires throughout the state we weren't able to, we usually can get them after fire season starts to um, uh, taper off uh, late in November, sometimes in December. But I think as we all know, uh, fire season went in through Christmas this last year and we weren't able to get, get them back. But we are committed to helping maintain those fire breaks. So if there's any uh, issues that come up, please uh, uh, give us a call. And I'm gonna repeat uh, Hector's telephone number for everybody out there. Uh, it's 894-1707, uh, that's 894-1707, and so if you have, you see a leaking sprinkler, sprinkler head, or if you have a concern about a fire, a fire break or um, uh, some high weeds, uh, please give, that, uh, give us a call. I mean, uh, the guys are out there in the districts a lot, um, but if you see something, say something, uh, because uh, you know, we, 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 might, we might miss it. And I know, uh, I mean, I'm your neighbor too, and I see all of you uh, on the walking paths and around the neighborhoods. And sometimes I see stuff, and I give Hector a call and, a and ask him about what's going on with it. Um, so uh, it is, it's very helpful to us. Uh, if you have any concerns, so please give us a call. Thank you. So uh, we got one comment over here. Um, if if one of the districts want to spend more 
per month for fees to hire a part-time person, can they do that? It's a, it's a, good, it's a good question. Um, the, the thing that you encounter is if you uh, raise the fees greater than the cost of living adjustment, um, it may uh, trigger uh, a Prop 218 election of all the property owners within the zone. Oh, forget it. So you do, you, you, <laughs> you okay. we, and we try to manage. We try to manage. We try to manage the, the district so we don't we don't get you we don't get into that bind. Okay. Um, uh, so um, it it is a good question, and I think you know um, uh, we, maybe we should be something we be thinking about. Can you kind of give me an idea what would be something? In you're in Jefferson Springs, right? Yeah. But what I would be what would be something that you would be in Jefferson Springs that would you you'd like to see that's um, an extra? I don't want it in Jefferson Springs. Everything's fine. Okay. I'm just, I'm just piggybacking on cottages oh, because okay. all of these questions have come up and they've been asking about the fees and everything else and and then the hours have been I think cut back, right? Do I understand that? Well, they've been at, they're, what we do is, as we explained, we average them. So some years the hours are up and some years the hours are down, but they pretty much stay within okay. uh, standard deviation. So that, that's why I call it a crazy question, because it doesn't affect my area, at least I don't think so, but I didn't know how they felt about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so any other questions? We're here to, we're here to answer any, any questions and, uh, until everybody's done. Um, off the topic of assessments, is this the appropriate forum to talk about dog poop? Sure. Uh, you know, there, I, I've learned one thing. I've learned, learned one thing uh, as a city manager for uh, the past 10 years. There's a couple of questions that always come up. Um, one of them is related to street lights. I get a lot of questions related to street lights. One of them has to do with sweeping street lights, and one of them has to do with uh, doggy waste. So. Happy to answer your questions. <laughs> OK. Um, first of all, thank you very much for installing the little bag dispensers in Ferber Park and along our path in the cottages. They're very helpful. Um, but as anybody who lives there and walks a dog knows, there is dog poop all over the place. And you know, we if you'll pardon the expression, my wife and I, we're, we're kind of like the dog poop Nazis. <laughs> we, 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 we pick up our dog poop and we ferociously defend our property <laughs> against poopers. <laughs> and, um, but if you walk along the path by uh, Manzanita Creek, where, where Brad's property um, backs up to, the, the sidewalk, the, the path, it's covered with dog poop. What can be done? OK. Well, uh, you know, we can. Uh, Maybe make an effort uh, when the con crew is there to go through there. I, I can tell you, I run on the path every day. Um, uh, one of the things that I see that kind of makes me a little crazy is somebody will get a bag, uh, they'll pick up the poo, and then, drop the bag. and then just leave the bag. And it's like, I mean, okay, well, if you're going to take the time to get the bag and pick up the, the waste, why don't you take it to the, the can? So I, I do see that. Um, I, that's something that, uh, that's a good comment. Uh, maybe that's something that, uh, we can look for maybe the conservation uh, crew when they come through to do a complete sweep on the path um, and get, thing every, get everything to, tuned up. I guess, I guess what I'm talking about, rather than, you know, some kind of, rather than a palliative measure, and I hate to even talk about this, I'm, I'm talking about enforcement. Yeah, pretty, pretty hard. I mean, uh, if, you, if you know who the person is who's got the, the dog, uh, you know, and it's, and it's got to be kind of like an eyewitness situation, it's really difficult to know who the scofflaw is. Um, and this is, you know, this is just, this is always a problem with, with canines and canine waste is it's there, but who is it? And many times, I, it's my experience that people in the neighborhood know who the scoff law is, but it's their neighbor, and they don't want to say anything. Um, and the reality is, we will do our best and take an anonymous report. But in our uh, rule of law, um, if we were going to send the police over there on a complaint, uh, everybody has the right to um, uh, confront their accuser. So we really don't take anonymous. Uh, we don't take anonymous complaints. Uh, we're happy. If you want to call in, uh, again, 894-1707. Uh, <laughs> um, 
And I know what Hector would do is he would pick up the phone and call the sergeant over at the police department and, and, and make the report, and the sergeant would probably send somebody by to knock on that person's door. Um, uh, but if the person said, who's complaining against me, we can't, you know, the, the police officer can't take, in a, can't take in an anonymous complaint. So we're, we're happy to do that. Those are just the two things that, I, that, I, that I've seen is many times people that have the scoff laws, nobody sees their dog when it does its business and leaves it on the, uh, leaves it on the trail. Or if the neighbors know who the scoff law is, they, it's their neighbor and they don't want to say anything. And I understand, I, you know, I understand that we want you want people want peace, uh, you know, peaceful neighbor, uh, peaceful neighborhood. So, uh, but that's well, that's. A couple of times we've tried to approach people and escalated into something nasty. Yeah. It is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh, that, uh, that's the first time uh, at one of these workshops that uh, we've had that question. So thank thank you very much. <laughs> so is there anybody? Is there any other any other questions? We have one, one another one over here. I just, I just had a comment to make. I, I, I came because I'm in support of you guys. I think you do a fantastic job. I think a lousy little $34 a month is nothing for landscaping. I used to hire landscapers. I've gone out on bids for landscaping. I know what it costs. And $34 a month is nothing. You guys do a fantastic job for what you're paid, for what you do. And I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very sweet. Thank you. Uh, I have a comment about Ferber Park and dogs. And recently, it seems that people think it's a dog park. And I have been unable to walk my dogs around the park because people had their dogs off leash out there. It would be really nice to have some signs that around the park that say your dogs have to be on the leash. Right. Okay. Good, good point. Um, you know, maybe, uh, Hector, maybe we can add that to the, the list. You're, there is a leash law. Um, uh, the council, city council does have a priority of uh, establishing uh, a dog park. Uh, the challenge has been a little bit like the skate park. Um, everybody wants a dog park, but nobody wants it uh, in you know, their, their immediate neighborhood. Um, and so we've been looking at some different sites for potential uh, dog parks. Um, I think probably the b most popular site is the, uh, what we call the Triangle property out off of uh, Askey Road near uh, Santana which would mean that dog, uh, people would have to drive their car there. Um, that is a, that's, in my estimation, that's probably the best potential site. Uh, dog parks don't take a lot of infrastructure, um, but dogs, uh, dog parks, they do bark. And if there are immediate neighbors, you know, they do, they do bo uh, bother the neighbors and you, you get complaints. In my estimation, that site out off of Asti Road is a, is a good, would be a good site for a dog park. It would mean dog owners would have to drive there, though. Uh, it wouldn't be within uh, walking distance. Um, and I know David and I have talked about that that site before uh, as being a, as a, being a good alternative. Um, and you know, I I've had uh, my you know I have a big dog. I always, my dog's always on a leash. Uh, just a couple about ten days ago, I uh, somebody was running their dog off leash and it came in and the dog started to scrap it up. And you know, I tried to be as cool as I could and ask the person, you know, really, you, you know, for for everybody, you got to keep your dog on a leash um, because you know uh, the uh, the animal the animals end up fighting and somebody's and and somebody's going to get hurt. So, uh, in terms of if there's an ongoing problem, you know, Brad, uh, I know uh, you, you can you can always call again 894-1707. And, and uh, Hector would then hook up your complaint uh, to the police department. Okay. So uh, looking like we're running a little uh, sl uh, slow on questions. Um, and uh, I just want to kind of tell, tell you what the next steps are. Um, we don't have a date yet for uh, the resolution setting the public hearing for the engineer's report. Uh, and then that resolution then would set the public hearing so we could take more comment. Uh, and uh, that would, uh, engineer's report would also uh, recommend what the assessments were going to be for the upcoming year. Typically, that happens in April and May. Um, and I think if you're really interested in following the issue, I, I think the best thing to do would ha uh, give your name and your email address to, to Linda 
who will compile an email uh, list and we'll make sure you get a, an email letting you know when this issue would be coming to the city council. Um, uh, and again, then the uh, public hearing is usually set um, either the first or second city council meeting in June. So we, we must set the, uh, set the public hearing uh, at, a, at a council meeting. That's usually the first meeting in May. And then the public hearing is usually, like I said, either, uh, one of the meetings in June. So, Tony, we got one more, we got one more question back over here. Well, we, we really do because uh, if you don't have the microphone, then it's not heard on the, it's not heard on the video. And, and then uh, we, can, it's, it, 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 we need it for the audio. Okay. As you might recall, about three weeks or a month or so ago, we met in your offices. Yes. And there was a lady there taking minutes of the meeting? Yes. Okay. Um, is, the, uh, is there access to these minutes? Because I, th I was under the impression that she was going to email it. I left my email address, but I never did see the minutes. Right. I know um, that was Terry that worked on that uh, at that meeting. And Linda, maybe you can make a note and circle around with Terry and find out where she stands on uh, production of those minutes. It was, it was a meeting with uh, about 12 people from the Cottages Lighting and Landscape District. Terry was there taking shorthand. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Right. Any, other, any other questions? I do want to say, uh, before we conclude, uh, thank you very much for uh, coming out uh, tonight and uh, uh, coming for our, our slideshow and, and your questions. Um, your, your feedback has been very valuable to us. I think the most, uh, one of the most important things I've heard is uh, right now is the comment related to, um, uh, 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 related to uh, Vintage Meadows and perhaps uh, considering some kind of uh, shade structure near the, the, kitty, uh, the kitty park. Uh, and some of these other issues related to um, uh, comments on uh, specific uh, li lighting and landscape areas. But uh, thank you very much for that, for that, uh, that input. That's really valuable to us. <laughs> I, I <laughs> so thank you very, uh, very much. Um, uh, and uh, uh, everybody have a, a safe trip home, OK? All right, thank you very much. OK, so with that, we'll uh, be concluding the meeting. Thank you.